Yes. Good evening. Welcome to Truth Baptist Church. We love to say welcome home. If it's your first time viewing us, we're so thrilled that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to be with us. Brother Jason, Pastor Corey, Sister Sydney, and myself, we welcome you with open arms. Our prayers have been and will be that God moves in this service tonight right where you are that the Holy Spirit himself will overshadow this service and that God would receive the glory. I've had this scripture on my mind all day today, and I want to read it to you. It's just a simple verse out of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, Shelley would question the last part, my sound mind. But I'm thankful that we can live in Christ and have no fear. We're in a time now where it seems that everyone is scattered abroad, but we're thankful you're home and you're safe. We want you to stay home and be safe. We pray God's speed through this crisis that we're, that we're in and that God himself would shine on us and that this would be lifted and that we'll once again be together in his house. Father, we thank you for the blessings that we've received, for the blessings that we're going to receive. We thank you. We pray, Lord, tonight, Father God, that you would help us, that we would be obedient. The songs that would be delivered for your glory, the message that will be preached for your glory, for the souls that will be touched to draw closer to thee, we pray that you would grant it now, Lord, for all of the requests that have gone out, too many for us to remember, we ask you to look down upon your children just now and bless them beyond measure. For it's in Christ's name we thank you and we pray. Amen. It's been such a beautiful day. I actually traveled today and through the day I experienced a uh, tremendous thunderstorm with hail. And uh, I thought, you know, even in the storm, God still is with us. He still overshadows us, and he still blesses us. I'm thankful tonight that Sister Sydney's going to come and sing for us. She has chosen two songs, and I'm going to try to assist her and help her as much as I can. But you be much in prayer as she comes to sing. This first song says, Till the Storm Passes By. Storm. 
How many is thankful for the storm today? Amen. I sure am thankful that, that in the storm or after the storm, He gives us the ability to realize that the storm was for our good. I believe this, that in, a, in the storms that we're facing right now, in the troubled times that we're going through, that Christ has an ultimate plan and that He has a purpose for all of this. And the purpose is to turn the world back to Him. One last time. And I believe it with all of my heart. He is raking people in. Making the Christians realize that they need to stop being wishy-washy and get on his side. And for the lost people to realize that this is their last chance. And that they have the choice today to either serve him or die and go to hell. I, I, let me just be blunt about it. If you're in one of those two bump, uh, boats, you need to make a decision tonight. Amen. I sure am thankful for the storm. Because even in the midst of the storm, I know that He is the one who controls the storm. Amen. I want to remind you to this win or this Sunday night or this Sunday is Easter Sunday, and we're going to uh, do some special things for Easter Sunday. Uh, we can't get together for the big Egapalooza like we want to. We can't get together and show or uh, and 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 worship together in physical form, but we sure can worship together in spirit and in truth through the avenue that God has given us. And we want to give you the opportunity to participate in Easter, in Easter service. And so what we want you to do is this Sunday... I want you to, to, some people's already bought Easter outfits, some people haven't. If you didn't, that's fine. If you did, if you've already prepared yourself for this Easter service Sunday and you, wanna, and you were going to get all dressed up, put on your fancy hat, we want you to go ahead and get dressed up and sit on your couch this week and we want you to take a family photo and, and tag the church in it on social media and hashtag Easter Live, all right? Easter live and we want to see how we want to flood Facebook with live pictures of you live streaming going to church when the devil says you can't go to church you got on the couch bless God and you went to church amen goes right there uh, but I want to take a look in, in Luke chapter number 23 today 23 um, we're going to uh, uh, this is Passover it begins today in the Jew Jewish holiday, and this is the beginning where Jesus would take his march towards the Day of Atonement, where he would lay down his life for people. Amen. And uh, in that time, there's a lot of changes that occur. And now you know some changes are pleasant and some changes are uncomfortable and some changes you just don't know that they were going to happen so they were scary, uh, just like the ones that we have faced recently. When I was a little boy, uh, my parents had a basement and that was where we went to play when it rained. We'd go down in the basement. I had a little uh, Michael Jordan basketball rim and, and until I hung on it and broke it. And they got me a Shaquille O'Neal because it was a, a breakaway one. Yeah, a little plastic hoop. And I'd go down there and I'd play basketball. And I was fearless down there. I'd play army men. I was the most imaginative. I think one of the reasons why I'm able to preach to an empty room is, is because in my mind there's so many personalities saying amen. I can do this. But... But here's the thing, uh, when I was a little boy, all of these, um, these, these thoughts in my mind and these personalities were down there alone in the basement and I'd, I was fearless, I was excited, I had this imagination, I'd play hard and, and things was wonderful until they forgot I was in the basement. And when they forgot I was in the basement, I would hear the door open. And when the door would open, that, that unique creaky sound, and I would hear... Click, and the lights would go out. And it was at the moment when the lights went out that I encountered a change in myself. I went from fearless to fearful. I went from uh, excited to uh, looking for an exit. I looked and I was scared to death because the change happened when the lights went out. 
Oh man, when I look at Luke chapter number 23, I'm, I, I feel that there is a marker in this book that shows that when the lights went out, everything changed for mankind. Now if you're at home and, or in the congregation, we want you to stand for the reading of God's Word. If you're able, if you're not able, that's fine. Just sit right there. We're going to honor the Word of God and, and stand in reverence to it. The Bible says this in verse number 25. I'm going to jump a little bit. 25 says this, and he released... Unto them, him, for uh, that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon the Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and him that laid the cross, they laid the cross. And he, that he might bear it after Jesus. Verse 32. And there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. Verse 44. Now look at this. Things are about to change. And it, and it was about the sixth hour. And there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried aloud, He said, Father, unto thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, He gave up the ghost. Lord, we thank You for this day. We thank You for what You've done in this place today. And You spoke to our hearts already. Lord, we ask you, God, that you would take this message and begin to breathe life in it. Lord, don't let it be a dead piece of, 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 of orchestrated words on a piece of paper, but Lord, let it have the breath of heaven all over it. God, I pray that you'd empty me of self today. I, I pray that you'd take control of these lips and make them your lips. Take control of this tongue and make it your tongue. Take over my body, my heart, and my mind, and my spirit and make it all yours today. Empty me of self and sin. Fill me with your spirit. Lord, it's the Super Bowl. And I pray, God, that we do one thing. We lift high Jesus Christ to these people, Lord, and leave no doubt, for it's in your name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. Amen. Look at verse number, n- number uh, 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 what was it say? At verse number 45, the Bible says, And the sun was darkened. And the midst of the veil of the temple was rent in, in the midst. You see, during this time, this was unlike any other time. This is an amazing thing. This is an amazing statement. The fact that the world was about to encounter something amazing. But before, they, before that happened, the lights went out in Jerusalem that night. That night they hung an innocent man and everything changed because they were encountered for the first time with the powerful change. Almighty chains because where the limitations of Jesus Christ as a man got taken over by the limitless power of the almighty God that was handed over to him all power was given to him on heaven and on earth and why because at the name of Jesus every tongue shall confess that the name of Jesus every sinner shall be born again I say this it was that night that night when all the world went dark that Jesus made a change for the good the man that put up the, put out the sun that ripped down the dividing line between God and man it was time for the world to encounter Jesus you see Jesus came as a little baby in a manger he didn't come like the world expected him to come He come feeble. He come homely. He come. He came as one that was a peasant boy. He was in a manger. Amen. 
He lived an obscure life of servitude. He walked seeking whom he may help constantly. But then, but then something happened. Something happened when the lights went out in Jerusalem. That night that they hung that innocent man, change took place and it was a powerful change. I came here this morning, this evening to tell you this, that there's some people that the lights have went out in your life so that you can see some power so you can see some might you can see a true change God came to you so that you can encounter real change today we find in Luke chapter 23 three lives that encountered change when the night that the lights went out in Jerusalem I believe this that every person when they encounter Jesus, will see their life changed in the following three ways given to us out of our Scripture. The Bible says, you say, preacher, how or what, how were they changed by the encounter with Jesus? Well, check this out. In verse number 18, we experience one person. A man who deserved everything that he was getting. But through his encounter with Jesus, he was able to continue because of a stand-in. Verse 18 says this, And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, release upon us Barabbas. Verse 25 tell us, tells us what Barabbas did. It says, And he, re, and he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they did desire, but he delivered Jesus to their will. You see, there's two things we need to understand this. We need to understand first who they desired. Oh yeah, look at this. In Matthew's Gospel, he calls this... Man Barabbas, a notable prisoner. You say, preacher, what's that mean? That means he had a reputation. In verse 25 of Luke, it tells us that reputation. It says that he was one who committed sedition. Now, I had to look this up because they don't say this up Campbell's Creek. Amen? But, but, but in the Merriam-Webster's dictionary, it's in there. It says, conduct or speech enticing people to rebel against authority of the state. So this man was a rebel. This man was an anarchist. This man was causing division amongst the people and Rome. He was driving a wedge. But it was in that time that something would happen. The Bible says that he was also a murderer. He caused someone to cease from existence. So this man was a radical that spoke and acted against the ruling hand of Rome during one of the one of those outspoken moments. This during this out, uh, this this anarchist speech he, that he was giving, uh, one somebody in the audience would have died, and he was in prison, rightfully for it. I started studying about this, and I started looking this up. And, uh, I said, what, 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 what happens when somebody commits murder in Rome? Now listen to this. If anyone knowingly and maliciously kills a free man, he shall be guilty of, of a capital crime. If he kills him by accident or without malice or unintentionally, let him substitute... <laughs> let him substitute a ram to be a sacrifice publicly by the way of making amends. <laughs> now if you don't see where I'm going, you're going to. Now look, we've seen who was they, they desired, but whom was the deliverer. You see, that they desired to free that man, but we need to consider the true deliverer because in the story, the deliverer would be Pilate, but the story's wrong because the deliverer is Jesus. They, Pilate gave a sentence that would deliver Jesus to death, but Jesus gave a sentence that would deliver Lazarus to a continued life. Had it not been for Jesus making a substitution, Barabbas would be dead. 
<laughs> when I was a 10-year-old, <laughs> we had three 12-year-old pitchers, no 11-year-old pitchers, and me. I was the only backup we had. So they one day we ran out of pitchers. that could. They, they only had a couple of innings apiece. So they put me out there against the Dodgers. The Dodgers were undefeated. They were whipping everybody. And so they throw me to the wolves. They stick me out there and they're like, we're going to lose anyway, so we might as well use our 10-year-old and let him get burned up and get, go home early. Well, they didn't know. I had a little bit of gas in the tank. i have been watching Rookie of the Year. And I was giving them the high, stinky cheddar. Well, I gave them everything I got for five innings and two outs. Then, <laughs> like Bum Gardner, <laughs> when he slipped on the ball and he ran out of juice, my ball started losing its zip. Matter of fact, I started losing control when I began to walk. We were up five runs in the sixth inning. Walk, 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 hit. Now we're up one run. The coach comes over and says, You did a good job, man, but you lost all your gas. He said, If we want to win this game, we've got to have somebody come in and save it. So he called <laughs> Charles Seacrest from out in center field. They said, Charles, come in. Charles comes in and throws three straight fastballs right down the middle. Struck the guy out. We won the game. I won the game. I got the win in the paper. He got the save in the paper. I'd have never got the win had he not got the save. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm saying this, Barabbas never would have got the win had Jesus not stepped in to save. And there's people out there today that are listening under the sound of my voice. I'm here to tell you, you're a loser right now unless you let somebody like Jesus step in and make the save in your life. I said that He came to make propitiation for your sin, to take place for your sin. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 3, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption uh, that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set for, forth to be the propitiation through faith in His blood to declare righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. John said this in one in, in the first John 1 or 2 uh, 2 and 2 it says this and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only but for all the sins of the whole world John 1 or uh, first John 4:10 says this here in his love not that we loved God but that God loved us and sent his only son for to be the propitiation of our sin you say what happened God saw you was losing juice you couldn't make it on your own you didn't have the same zip anymore and he looked out there in the middle in the in the center fielder and he said he's got some innings left in him he called in the writing from out of heaven who came in and made the save in your life i sure am thankful that i had somebody to step in for me i wonder has he saved you today oh but we move on there's another man there immediately after the release of barabbas and the persecution of Jesus. The Bible says, in his encounter with Jesus, this man, Simon, was consecrated, set apart for service. The Bible says, and as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon of Cyrene. <laughs> he was coming out of the country and on... Him they laid the cross that he might bury it after Jesus. Simon was called. He was called to do something he, wouldn't, he would have rather not have had to do. 
You see, how do you know that preacher? Because the Bible says that he was on his way out of the country. That means that he wasn't sticking around for what the Romans had to do with Jesus. He, was, he heard that some things were going south down there for anybody who was a Jew or a proselyte Jew. And he said, i got to get out of here. So he was headed out of the country. And the Bible says that it was at that time that they pulled him aside and they called him into service. That means he was going somewhere else with the intentions of doing something else but it was at that time God called him for service and they laid on him something that was heavy, something that was burdensome, something that he did not expect and because of this lay on of a burden God changed his life forever because of the encounter that he had with Jesus oh man he encountered a change in his life when they laid the cross on him. <laughs> oh, with some simple study, you'll find out that out of this necessity came a heritage. Mark is one of the most, <laughs> he's the one who speaks the most about this Simon. He says that Simon in Mark 15, 21 was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Right. Indicating that they were known, <laughs> they were known to the people that Mark was. They were known to the people that would be reading this. So that meant that the heritage that was laid on the back of this man Simon was laid on the back of his two boys. Hmm. If you continue on, Paul makes reference to him. <laughs> to Rufus. When he greets in the letter of Rome, he calls... The chosen in the calls them the chosen in the Lord, whose mother, he said, has been like a mother to me. In fact, the fact still remains here, is that everything changed in his life because the the cross was laid on him, and everything changed in his son's life in his other son's life, and in his wife's life. Because he was called into action, he was, give, he was consecrated, set aside for the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know this, that there's some people who's had encountered Christ. But they didn't realize that in their encounter, he called them to service. He gave them a purpose, something greater their existence and they're frustrated at what their life is holding is holding for them because they haven't started the thing that God wants to lay on their back and then there's some people who said man I don't I don't just want to be something I want to be it mm. hold on let me stop right there and say this you'll never be something when you're just trying to be it let me say it again. Let me make it a little more understandable for the people who got the question mark on their face. For those of you who think that you can rise all the way to the top and never start at the bottom, you've got a serious problem in your head. But that's free. I can say that because you ain't going to get... What are you going to do? Just quit watching? Okay. I don't care. You know why I don't care? Because I'm trying to help you. And if you hang on for a minute, you're going to get some help. <laughs> you see, God called them to service. Yes. Service means sacrifice. Service means putting oneself at the bottom and allowing something else to go to the top. John had a mighty ministry but he realized that one day he was going to he seen somebody coming off in the distance that he said was mightier than he and he said this for this I must decrease that he may increase whenever you realize that your decreasion comes at his succession that whenever you lower yourself you raise him up you'll do a lot better off in the ministry I promise you and then there's those people who say, I want this mighty job, and they, realize, they don't realize that the mightiest job is the one that's available. <laughs> there was a, a church in the 1800s 
that was asking for a preacher or for somebody to teach a Sunday school class for boys. They looked around and they tried to find and nobody wanted to volunteer until this man said, I'll do it. His name was Edwin Edward Kimball. <laughs> he took the job. So he served for a little bit of time and he began to get really interested in the class and give himself to the class. And in 1858, in the city of Boston, Edward Kimball, was a, who was a young Sunday school teacher, made the habit of personally seeking out every student to give them the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. He noticed that there was one person that always sat in the back, never paid attention, always acted up in class, always was making jokes, and, 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 and always wanted to do everything except for listen. So he went and visited him at his job. He worked at a shoe store. Kim Ball would visit that young man where that young man in the back was, was in the back room stocking his shelves. He began to discuss with him that Jesus Christ loves him and that he cared for him. And Edward Kimball lowered himself and he raised Jesus up. And that night, in the back of a shoe store, Dwight Moody gave his heart to Jesus Christ. Now... <laughs> Now, 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 now! If I if I stop the story, I do it in injustice because you see, it all started with just a Sunday school teacher. But then Dwight Moody would become an evangelist who would go all over the world preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he would take under his wing a man named F. B. Meyer who had been in the ministry, but he didn't really know what he was doing, and he began to mentor this man who would write books and preach sermons, and this man would preach uh, he would preach to a man named J. Wilbur Chapman and, and he would begin to disciple who would later uh, 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 sorry um, who would later disciple a man out of, straight out of baseball named Billy Sunday through Billy Sunday the doors were opened to, for Mordecai Ham to go into Charlotte in Charlotte there was, Mordecai Ham would preach a revival that would last for weeks where a 16 year old boy would walk in there and he would fall on his face that little boy was named D uh, Billy Graham you say what happened a little a, 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 a little job came open in the church and a man stepped up and said I'll take it I may be little but little is much when the Lord is in it I may not be worth much but but I can do something for God and because of that man hundreds and thousands and thousands and thousands upon thousands of people will walk up to him in heaven and shake his hand and say thank you for just being a Sunday school teacher you see, everybody wants to stand in front of people out of a full pit, in front of a mighty crowd. I'm preaching to three people today and a camera. And I tell you what, I'm more in the will of God than I was four weeks ago preaching to 200 and a camera. You say, why? Because this is where He led me so that I could reach more people. Because this was my decretion so that he could be lifted higher. Oh, <laughs> you see, when you really, when you really encounter Jesus, <clears throat> you will set, you'll be set apart for something bigger than you ever. Mark said this, he says, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross and follow me. Galatians 2.20 says this, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the, Lord Je or of the, of the Son of God who loved me and He gave Himself for me because the cross is laid on us. We have a service to provide. Mm -hmm. We've been called in today. Yeah, one was, one was consecrated. And one got to continue. Right. But let's look at this last one. You see, this last one, this last story comes in too. 
there's part A and part B to the story. You see, the Bible says that in their encounter with Jesus, they found that it wasn't just what they said, but it was who they said it to that caused the consequences of their speech. Let's look at their encounter. Verse 43 says this. Wait, that's not 40. Every one of them is 43 right here. The Bible says this. And one of the male factors which were hung railed on him saying if thou be Christ save thyself and us. But then there was this other guy whose speech was a little bit different. And the other one answered Rebuking him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly. For we, we receive the, the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he looked over at Jesus. You see, and by location, he was already where he was supposed to be. But his mouth hasn't said what it needed to say. They were both in the same place. But one said the right thing, and the other said the wrong thing. He said, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Verily I say unto thee, today... Shalt thou be with me in paradise. The difference between these two mans isn't about their location. They were both in the same spot. It was about what the, they said to Christ that made the difference. It is what they said to Christ that made the difference. I was raised in church. My entire life. All I've ever known is going to church. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I have parents who thought saw fit to make their son go to church. But when I went to church, I learned to play the game. I knew how to testify. I used to go to school and cuss like a sailor. I used to beat people up for the fun of it. <laughs> I wasn't a very good person. I love Jesus. I'm so thankful that He died on the cross for my sins. And I said it. And I said it in the right place. I was in church. But I'll never forget when things changed. i never forget the night that the lights went off in my life. And I sat down in a deacon's chair. And there was a preacher got up there and began to preach. And, and snot come down out of this nose. And he... Sucked it back up and it come down out of this nose and sweat went all over him. Looked like a rain coming down out of heaven and spit going to the back row and his lungs going and hitting people in the face. And I remember it very well as, as he preached and he said everything that everybody should say as a preacher. And I didn't hear a word. Singers got up there and they, they sung an altar call song. They sung another altar call song. And I'm sitting there going, I don't even want to be here. And they just keep singing and singing and singing and singing singing and singing and then somebody got tired of them singing and come up and got saved and their brother stood up Matt Chapman stood up and said Woo! that's my brother he got saved and that testimony that testimony of change changed in my heart it swept over there into the deacon's chair where nobody else was it was over here where I was sitting there all relaxed ready to just go on home and go to a party that Jesus swept by and made a change. He turned the lights out, honey. I said he turned the lights out, honey. And he crucified me. And I took up my cross and started carrying him. Everything changed in my life that night. Oh, I remember a couple weeks later, Brother Chris, for months I'd been hypocritical standing and testifying. I felt the urge. But I didn't want to do it because I was afraid I'd sound just like I did before. But then he started beating on my chest. I slept on it. Went to Wednesday night. 
youth service, and he's like, just testify here. And I, said, and I sit in the back of the youth service, and I said, if I just play the game, I can get out of here. And I, and I was sweating. I didn't sleep all week long. He said, you need to testify. You need to tell somebody how good I am. Sunday morning come around, they, they, sang, they sang a song oh, just over in the glory land. Hey, they sang just over in the glory land. I was popped up out of the deacon's chair, and I said, I don't even know what that song means right now but I want to stand and testify tell you that Jesus Christ died for my sins and I know that I know that I know that my name's written down in the Lamb's book of life he saved me completed me by this time I'm all the way down the halfway down the row I'm spitting all over the place sweat's going everywhere I'm 15 minutes into a testimony telling them about how good Jesus is Oh, and it was from that moment on, he began to call me and change me. And I ran from him. You see, he had to turn the lights out to change my speech. There's some reasons why we're going through what we're going through today. It's because he's turning the light switch off. Trying to change your speech. He said that if we, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and out of the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You say, what happens? You've got to believe what you've been talking for so long. It's not good enough to stand up and testify telling people until you stand up in your heart and believe it. There has to be a true change. And change comes when you believe on Him and repent and follow Him. Change will happen. You say, what happened that day when they turned the lights out? The world got introduced to the full power of Jesus Christ and His ability to change. Right in the middle of the coronavirus, COVID-19, social distancing. God has turned out the lights in your life. Because he's trying to focus you in on the light. He is the light. And Without him, your life ain't worth living. You need to make a change today. There's some people today that need to call on him. So that they can continue on. Because you're bound for an eternity in hell. But if you want to be saved. The Bible says you can be. There's some here today. I'm done. There's some here watching today. That needs to realize that he's already set you apart. For his service. And then there's some other people. You've been wishy-washy. Going through the motions. You've been hanging out in the right spot. But you ain't been saying what you believe in your heart. Maybe it's because you need to change the beliefs in your heart to serve Him. See, I don't know if you're Barabbas, Simon, or a thief on the cross. But I do know this, that when they turned the lights out, He turned it out to show His power and His ability to change. If you're listening under the sound of my voice today, I'm here to say this. He can change your life. He can turn your world upside down. All you have to do today is surrender to Him. If you're watching today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'd like to invite you. I'd like to say to you, He loves you. He gave His life for you. Everything that He did, His very being was for you. When He hung the stars in the sky, He did it for you. When he put the moon up there at night, he did that for you. When he made the sun to shine, he did that for you. The, sun, the flowers are blooming because of you today. But let me tell you this, more importantly than that, he came to earth so that you could go to heaven. If you're listening under the sound of my voice, I want to say, will you... The Bible says this, that if we confess our sins... 
He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let me ask you this. Wouldn't you like to be saved? If you're listening today, this is how I did it. It's as simple as can be. Lord, I'm a sinner. I believe that you came into... I, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Would you come into my heart today and save me? If you pray that prayer, I believe that what the Bible says is true. By confession of mouth, you have been saved. Maybe you're a Christian today and you say this, I've been going through some motions in my life. Some things really need to change. I want to earnestly and honestly seek after God and take up the cross. Because He's called me into service. But before I can do anything, He needs to change some things in my life. And i got to get going on this. i got to change my speech. Maybe your prayer should be this, Lord. I want to be you. But for me to be used, I know you've got to make some changes. And you caused this event to happen for me to recognize that you have all the power. And I need to stop trying to do everything on my own. And start letting you have the power. Will you use me for your service? I believe this, that if you honestly seek his face, you'll find it. The Bible says that you will when you search for him with all your heart. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for being so good to us. Lord, I thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to take your word and continue. Lord, I'm going to hold to the promise where you said my word will not return void. And at some point, this message will enter the heart of somebody who needs it and change will occur. We love you, and all change comes from you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. If you're listening, and you've, you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, or you just did today, I want you to reach out to us and let us know that you, so we can pray for you. We can help you. We can put some, some material in your hands to help you to grow. We'll send you a Bible if we have to. We, we've got this book that we wrote for you. It tells you a little bit more about salvation. It helps you to understand oh, oh, what it means to be saved and to give you some assurance of that salvation. It also tells you about baptism. It's your first testimony. It's, it's telling the world, I'm no longer the same person that I used to be. You may have used to see a drug addict. You may have used to see an alcoholic. You may have used to see this person or that person. But now I've been buried in Christ Jesus and I'm risen a new creature also tells you what the church can do for you and why you need to be a member of a local New Testament church. It doesn't even have to be this one. It means just somebody who preaches the gospel who ain't scared to tell you like it is. We want to send this to you. So send us your, e your, your um, yeah, you can send us your email. We can send it to you digitally. I think I can do that. I think. I don't know. Uh, or we can send it to you. Uh, we can send it to you in, in the snail mail if that's possible. All right. But I uh, just wanted to remind you of that. And don't forget, uh, for Truth Baptist Church, uh, we'd like to ask you and invite, to invite a friend this week. Invite a friend to church this week. Now, I, I don't want you to bring them to the church house. I don't want them to bring them to your house. But make a watch party. I don't know what that is, but there's parties of watching things on there. And you should have one for church this week. And let me tell you how to get the most out of that. You invite people before you have the watch party. You tell them, you send them a message tonight saying, This Sunday at 11.05, I'm having a watch party and I want to invite you to go to my church. I've been begging you and begging you and begging you to go to church with me. Now, would you go to church with me and stay on your couch? And I promise you, you might get somebody who bites on that. But we like you to... To make sure that you take a picture either in your, outf your Easter outfit, whether you're e just as long as you got clothes on. Amen. We don't need somebody showing stuff and then tagging the church. That's just weird. You're weird for thinking like that. And I'm weird for saying it on live stream. This is why we, we have to learn to edit. Right, Chris? <clears throat> 
But we want you to, to put your Easter outfits on, even if it's family matching pajama day. I don't care. Just uh, tag the church in it, Truth Baptist Church, and put hashtag Easter Live. All right? Hashtag Easter Live. All right. I'm going to ask Brother Chris to come pray for us, if he will. Uh, he knows a little bit about it, but we want to share it with the world. We hope that you're still with us. Uh, there's been a, 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 a clip, a video put together of some of the members here at the church that are sharing their love and some kind words. So we're going to close with prayer, and then we're going to play that video. Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for what the Word of God, your Word, means to us. Help us that we would hide it in our hearts, that we might not sin against you. Lord, we pray that if there was one tonight that asked Jesus Christ to come into their life, they would call us here at the church, reach out to us. We can talk to them and guide them. We might be able to teach them the paths of righteousness as you have brought it to us through your word. For it's in Christ's name we thank you and we pray. Amen. Watch the video. Hey, Pastor Corey. Just wanted to let you know how much my family and I appreciate you. We love you, and we are truly home at Truth Baptist Church. Have a good day. Hey, Corey, it's Vaughn. I'm calling to tell you for both Steve and myself how much we miss seeing you, how much we love you, love the church, love the job you're doing, and we can't wait till we're all together again. Okay, Corey, I'm laying in bed watching The Wall, where a woman in isolation is winning $3 million. But anyway, so I'm in isolation trying to stay out of George's way so he can blare the TV. Anyway, thank you so much for what you're doing to keep us all going and motivated. Thank you, Jason and Chris, for helping and everybody else to the singers. We love you guys and uh, stay strong. Thanks. Hey, Corey. I'm not going to try to mention everybody's names because I'm afraid I'll forget somebody. So I just want to send out a big shout out and a thank you for all you and all the other guys do for the church and for us. Thank you for volunteering your time. Thank you for using your talents to in every part of growing this church. Um, this is a big shout out, like I said, for me and mom because she's not going to get on a video. Um, but she did say that she loves you guys and I love you guys. And we thank you. Have a great day. Hey, Corey, just wanted to let you know, love you guys, and hope to be in church with you again soon. Thanks, Corey. Stay safe. Hey, Pilgrim, you're doing a fine job. Keep it up. Hello. Hope all is well with you. I am bored out of my mind. I can't wait to get back to church and see all of my people. I just wanted to tell you how much I appreciate you and everything you do for us. And I can't wait to see you. Love and miss you. Bye. Hey, Corey. I just wanted to tell you thank you for everything that you're doing for us right now. You being there at the church and making sure that we get um, get our, our souls fed and the Lord is really using you right now. There are people that need you so bad and, and God is making sure that you take care of us and I appreciate you being our shepherd. Thank you. We love you. Can't wait to see you. Hey guys, I just wanted to give a big shout out to Truth Baptist Church. We love you and we appreciate you for all that you do. Hello. I wanted to come on. And, no, I not want. I needed and wanted to come on to tell you, Corey and Chris and Jason and everyone behind the scenes, how much I appreciate you and how much I love you and what you're doing for all of us with Zoom and live streaming. I miss you all so much, but knowing that I can see you and hear you and get our praise on here at the house means so much to me. I'm forever grateful. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Mwah. Bye. I'm just going to give him 2 Timothy 4.2 that says, since he is a pastor, a preacher, it says, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Corey, 
you're reaching us all with your great pastoring and your great lessons and your, t your lessons and your teachings. We still say amen. I still say amen. I still give you your hands up. And I still love when you get mm, when you still get tongue tied and can't go on because the Spirit of God is so much over you. Don't give up. Stay strong, brother. We're praying for you just like you're praying for us. We're all in this together. God won't let us down. We love you. Corey and the rest of the crew, we miss you. We love you. We're so thankful for everything you're doing. Say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we love you guys. Thanks. Hey, Corey and everybody else down at Truth. Just want to let you all know that I'm praying for you all, and I really appreciate everything that you guys are doing to keep us together with services and live streams and Sunday school. I'm excited that I get to turn it on on Sunday mornings. No matter what I'm doing, I still get to be involved in Sunday school and listen to the lesson and that the kids get to be involved with their teachers. They miss everybody so much, and I miss being there. Can't wait till this is all over. Um, just wanted to let you all know that you're doing a really good job and we all appreciate everything that you all are doing um, we're praying for you guys keep praying for us and hopefully this is all over soon and we can all be back in church praising the lord have a good day guys hey bub just want to say how much i appreciate you and miss you and love you and can't wait to see you after all this is over god bless you Hey guys, um, they asked me to do a video, so here it is. I really despise seeing myself on camera, but um, I want to thank Corey and the guys, or all y'all, or whatever, all, all the guys that are being instrumental in um, keeping us up to date and in contact. I miss you guys, can't wait to see you. Hey, Pastor Corey and family, we just wanted to drop you a quick video, tell you guys how much we love you and miss you guys. Y'all want to say something to Adam family? Yeah, thanks, Corey, for being the best preacher ever. Thank you, Corey. Thank you for all you do, and we love you guys very much. Thanks again. I love you guys. Hey, guys, this is uh, Skip Hudnall here from the Hudnall household in Rand. Uh, we just wanted to take the time as a family to thank you guys for all the awesome work you're doing to keep the church services going. With all this uh, COVID-19 and shutting down church services, uh, you guys have done a really brave work to keep the churches going, keep the services going. Uh, we're so thankful for Chris, Corey, Jason, all the staff at Truth Baptist that's keeping us, us able to keep connected and uh, maintain a, a sense of continuity. We really thank you guys for doing this. Uh, enjoy watching you guys live stream. I'm really tickled that we uh, we found out about the Zoom. So uh, Sunday school's going on. Uh, really, really happy. Um, my family right now is dispersed, uh, scattered all over the place, and uh, I just really couldn't get them together long enough to put this video together for you. But they uh, they will thank you in person uh, at the first opportunity. Again, thank you guys so very much for keeping this thing going. We love you, and we hope that uh, you, you stay safe and that uh, we can continue to keep the continuity of the church going. Thanks again. Hey, Corey. We appreciate you during this quarantine. And always. And always. We, we love, love you. you. We love you, Corey. Love you, Corey. We have our mask on, and we're social distancing. <laughs> Goodbye. We're all in this together. Thank you guys so much for that. That means a lot to us. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're just thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ is being uplifted in this generation through this avenue. and He's just used us as the tools in his hand. Um, I told these guys that we're, <clears throat> we're going to get them t-shirts that says, uh, I was an essential employee and all I got was this t-shirt. So, uh, one of you crafty people make that for him, all right? But we love you, and I sure am thankful for, to be your pastor. And I'm sure I speak for these guys when they say thank you for the encouragement. Uh, it means a lot to us. Uh, but 
uh, we'll see you soon. We love you.